What's popping guys? I hope you guys have an amazing day and today for you guys we're gonna be examining or rather discussing quite a controversial topic. It's pretty much related to everybody at Hogwarts, including the teachers, the other staff and the students. If you don't know already, corporal punishment was a system used at school, even muggle school. It was however banned by several or actually I think all countries, actually most of the countries. And to keep it simple to you, corporal punishment was just to put, was just to inflict physical pain upon someone. In this situation at school, the teachers, you know, hitting or doing anything like that to the to the students. But this begs the question: Do you think corporal punishment was actually allowed at Hogwarts? Now, corporal punishment was obviously made by hitting, stomping, and throwing things at children. We do actually see this type of punishment with the Harry Potter books and films. Majorly, the books are able to give us this sort of um, question because the, they, we actually see it in the actual books. This was most notably performed by Severus Snape and even Umbridge. Snape obviously hit the students using books commonly like Harry and Ron and also, you know, pulled their hair and stuff like that. And of course, um, we all know and hate the one and only darkest wizard there ever lived umbridge as she used that weird pen thing it's actually called a black quill i have a video on that make sure you guys go check that out about all its history and how it's used and how it's been used before but actually the true fact is that it just depends on whoever's headmaster at that point in time for example dumbledore was against it and there was even evidence in the books professor umbridge seized marietta pulled her around to her face to face her and began shaking her very hard a split second later dumbledore was on his feet his wand raised Kingsley started for, war, forwards and Umbridge leaped backwards, waving her hands in the air as as though they had been burned. I cannot let you manhandle my students, Dolores, said Dumbledore. There's also evidence that says Dumbledore was actually was not a, again and not a fan of corporal punishment, as well as Professor McGonagall. Teach, Moody, is that a student? shrieked Professor McGonagall, the books spilling out of our arms. Yep, said Moody. No, cried Professor McGonagall, running down the stairs and pulling out her wand. A moment later, with a loud snapping noise, Draco, Draco Malfoy had reappeared, lying in a heap on the floor, with a sleek blonde hair all over his now brilliantly pink face. He got to his feet, wincing. Moody, we never use transfiguration as a form of punishment, McGonagall, Professor McGonagall said weakly. Surely Dumbledore told you that. He might have mentioned it, yeah said Moody, scratching his chin un unconcerned, unconcernedly, but it thought a good sharp shock. This shows that both Dumbledore and McGonagall were both against it. Of course, Umbridge was never, was clearly completely for it. She told her students, clearly shown in I Must Not Tell Lies. She also actually planned to make some order of decretional degrees or, which would, or something, whatever they're called, which would allow them to hit students which filch which Filch loved, and there's even evidence in the books that shows that Filch and Umbridge both wanted to do it. I've been telling Dumbledore, I've been telling Dumbledore for years now, and years, he's too soft with all of you, said Filch, chuckling nastily. You filthy little beast would have never dropped sting pellets if you'd known I'd had any of my power to whip you raw, would you? No. Nobody would have thought of throwing fanged gri gris grisbees down the corridor if I could have strung your body, strung your ankles in my office, would they? But when Educational Decree number 29 comes in, Potter, I'll be allowed to do them things. Apparently, this decree states and gives Argos Filch permission to physically punish and cause pain for misbehaving as Filch is the caretaker. However, this decree actually never came into power. Furthermore, though, there were actually another form called appro Approval of Whipping Form. This form would effectively give power to do the same as the decree. And once again, there is evidence. Approval for whipping, approval for whipping. I can do it at last. They've had it coming for them for years. Approval for whipping, approval for whipping. I can do it at last. They've had it coming, they've had them coming for years. He pulled out a piece of parchment, kissed it, and they shuffled her rapidly back out of the door, back out of the door, clutching it to his chest. Filch elbowed his way closer to Umbridge, almost crying in it with happiness. I've got the form, headmistress, he said hoarsely. Waving the part, waving the piece of parchment Harry just seen him take from the desk. I've got the form and I've got the whips waiting. Oh, let me do it now. Filch had always wanted to get, wanted this, but Dumbledore refused to give him permission. A highly polished collection of chains and mal mal manacles hung on the wall behind Filch's desk. It's always been common knowledge that he was always begging Dumbledore to let him suspend students by their ankles from the ceiling. 
Just then, just when Filch was about to get it, Fred and George demanded they're not gonna have any of it. Let's start with Dom. Um, let's start with Umbridge and move to Snape when when Snape took over Hogwarts. Harrow's became the new defense against the dark arts teachers, which is now called dark arts because all they do is just teach the dark arts. And the Carrows actually could punish them as much as they wanted. And of course, they were both the Carrows twins were both Death Eaters. There is even indeed Cara, uh, the evidence that from the books that the Carrows were actually even worse than Umbridge at punishing. And they even made the students use the Cruciatus curse on other kids. Do you know the Carrows? Those two Death Eaters who teach here, they do more than ju just teach, said Neville. They're in charge of all discipline. They like punishment, the Caros. Like Umbridge? Nah, they make her look tame. The other teachers were, are all supposed to refer to us to the refer to us to the Caros if you do anything wrong. They don't though, if they can avoid it. You can tell they all hate them as much as we do. Amicus, the bloke, he teaches what used to be defense against the Dark Arts, except now it's just called the Dark Arts. We're supposed to practice the Cruciatus Curse on people who've earned detentions. But in the in the more olden days, it was not actually that strictly prohibited. Filch even gives us evidence of this to us in the Philosopher's Stone. Follow me, said Fil Filch, lighting a lamp and leading them outside. I bet you'll think twice about breaking a school rule again, won't you? Eh? He, con he continued, leering at, leering at them. Oh yes, hard work and pain are the best teachers, if you ask me now. It's just a pity they let the old punishments die out. Hang out, hang your, hang you by your wrist from the ceiling for a few days. I've still got the chains in my office. Keep them well oiled in case they're ever needed. Right, off we go now. It'll be worse if you, it'll be worse for you if you do. So there you go. Corporal punishment is actually not even allowed that far before Harry, as Filch had done it. I think Dumbledore stopped it once he came into power of, of headmaster. He came into power at around, I believe, 1954 to 1965, ever anywhere in the middle. Rip Dumbledore, by the way. Anyways, so there it is, your answer, and if you guys enjoyed it, put it down in the comments below, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and until next time, see ya!